There are essentially three types of biohacking. DIY biology, which sounds like the reason 13-year-old boys take 45-minute showers, but turns out it's mostly about injecting stuff, not ejecting stuff. Then there's body hacking or grinding, which sounds way dirtier, but has mostly to do with stabbing electronics into yourself. Essentially, the BDSM of biohacking. And then there's quantified self, where you track tons of data points about your health and try to optimize them. It's kind of the tantric sex of biohacking. A lot of waiting and observing that something might happen. Just breathe and feel, and it's okay that nothing's happening yet. Dave Asprey is the king of this hill, and as you may have guessed by his glasses, this is the least rock and roll way to biohack. But if you're not ready for injecting or cutting, then maybe counting is more your speed. But we don't have time for all of these things tonight, so we're gonna concentrate on DIY biology, the global grassroots movement of citizen scientists doing cutting edge experiments to enhance themselves and nature. Improving on nature gets some people all up in a tizzy. If that's you, please take off all your clothes and just run out into nature. I'll wait. Okay, they're gone. Whew, I am not waiting. No stupids allowed. For the rest of us, let's talk quickly about nature. That ravenous void disguised as flowers and kittens to more easily murder you. I wanna talk specifically about humanity's ongoing efforts to not be murdered by nature. We've gotten pretty good. We're better at not being murdered than like any other species ever. And the reason is because we've evolved to be biohackers. Back in the caveman days, being a biohacker was every person's full-time job. So Lenny, what do you do? Me? Oh, you know, I just try to not die all day. Oh, crazy, that's what I do too. Small world. Small, flat world. Yeah, the hours are relentless, but it pays the bills, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what bills are, but, uh, you okay? Ah, oh, shit. Since then, we began to rely on medicine men, or doctors, to save us from nature's murderous ways. Not 100% smart, but overall, it served us well, and now, pretty much every big medical innovation comes from elite, well-funded institutions. The new COVID vaccines are coming from Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Merck, and rising star Moderna, who received a $1.5 billion reach around from Uncle Sam in 2020. Hey, they deserve it. Scientists and doctors are awesome, but being awesome does have a side effect that was pretty well articulated by Jerry Seinfeld. It's that little bit of arrogance in the medical community I think we could all live without. Like when you go to see the doctor, you don't see the actual doctor first. You must wait in the waiting room. There's no chance of not waiting. That's the name of the room. <laughs> Doctors always want your pants off. Take your pants off. <laughs> doctor would like to see you with no pants. Just once I'd like to say to the doctor, you know what? I'm not ready for you yet. Why don't you go back in your little office? I'll be in in a minute. And get your pants off. The answer to that arrogance? Uh, no, not, uh... Not biohackers. If there's one thing the biohacking community has even more of than the medical community, it's arrogance. Like, you know, the arrogance to take on the medical community? Hey, I applaud it, but it can come off kind of douchey. Just listen to Dave Asprey, the father of biohacking, tell you how he's got it all under control. I'm gonna make it to at least 180 if I want to. I love how he says, if I want to, just in case he doesn't make it, it's because, you know, he changed his mind. But as arrogant as that sounds, I would argue it's arrogance, the utter contempt for mother nature that has always driven innovation. I mean, look, we're not gonna cure cancer by not playing God. If you follow that very flawed logic, it's obvious that disseminating this incredibly powerful technology into the hands of arrogant biohackers across the globe will supercharge human evolution and not do anything negative. Okay, yeah, that's obviously wrong. There's gonna be some blowback. Some people are gonna pee in the gene pool. But bioethics is a big enough topic for its own episode, so in this piece, I'll be making the argument for proliferation. Because it's gonna happen whether we like it or not, and a little gallows humor helps the medicine go down. Look, reality is, having the ability to pick and choose the traits of our kids will not destroy diversity. Sometimes I'm 
invited to give a talk on like a kind of futuristic science things. And I've had tall, blonde trophy wives come up to me after the talk and say, wow, that was incredible. That was an incredibly interesting talk. But don't you think there's a problem with all this? Won't every parent just select their kids to be tall and blonde? The geeks all come up to me and say, isn't this dangerous? Because all, all the parents are going to select for the smartest kid they can possibly get, because that's what the geeks think is cool. You know, probably if you're talking to some NFL coaches, they'd say, oh, what? everyone's going everyone's gonna to select their kid to be 6'5 and run a 4'240. There will be a wide range of what people think is the right thing to select for or engineer for. Yeah, a super likely outcome is that life on Earth becomes even more diverse. We've been around for 3.2 billion years. Yeah. So we've been a lot of different things. We could be a lot of different things. Do you think there's a portal to a Cambrian explosion of different successors to humans? Yes, it must be. Right. Yeah, but I mean, it has to be. That's right, get excited. We're about to splinter into a zillion different species. All those aliens you've seen in the Star Trek and Star Wars movies won't be science fiction, they'll be options. Right after DIY biohacking hits the knee of the curve. <laughs> Welcome to Knee of the Curve, I'm Emmett Short. Don't get left in the past, hit subscribe to stay up to date on which Star Trek aliens get laid the most. I'm a comedian, filmmaker, futurist, and amateur biohacker who's engineered this bedroom into a megaphone for science-based late night jokes. If you think I deserve to stop sleeping under this desk, consider joining on Patreon, becoming a YouTube member, or maybe buying my new biohack, BDE Coffee. Just launched a new flavor, Shaquille O'Neal's Smile. Let's jump back in. The reason all this biotechnology from big, arrogant pharma companies is finding its way into the hands of the even more arrogant masses is because of a little thing called Wright's Law. Not Moore's Law, which I was totally jealous of because bucket list, I'd love to get a law. And Gordon Moore got a law for just noticing that sometimes things double. Only a billionaire would get a law for something so dumb. Moore's Law assumes the passage of time is somehow causing innovation, but Wright's Law is about how increasing production volume creates efficiencies and leads to a constant reduction in price, which fuels demand, which increases production, which increases efficiencies. So it's a vicious cycle. Time is not part of the equation, Gordon. So now I just kind of feel sorry for Gordon Moore. I mean, people were so quick to kiss his ass and give him a law, and now it's attached to his name. He's got to show up to parties and people are talking behind his back. And that's that dude with the law that's not really a law because it's based on completely ridiculous assumptions. Don't look, oh shit. Hey Gordon, great to see you, pal. Love your law, dude. The point is shit's gotten cheap. This is Josiah Zayner. He runs a company called The Odin that sells CRISPR kits to the public. If you don't know what CRISPR is, I'll let Josiah define it for you. CRISPR, it's so funny because it's got this stupid acronym that doesn't even make any sense and I always forget it half the time and I'm just like, fuck. Okay, that was not helpful. CRISPR is a gene editing technology. It's super cheap and relatively easy to use and very powerful. What could happen if people could just make a CRISPR plasmid for dirt cheap and modify their own genome? What can happen? Uh, they could die. Yeah. That clip was from an event where he injected himself with a version of CRISPR meant to knock out a gene in his DNA that controls muscle growth. So he could get super swole like this dog who had the same treatment. Tragically, Josiah still looks like that. It is a tragedy. Just think how many more CRISPR kits he could have sold if he had transformed into this. Tragic. Not to mention how many dogfights he could have won. Brains and brawn? He could bet on himself? It's a win-win-win. Now, the medical community wants to convince us experimenting on yourself is dangerous. Fine. Yeah, I'm convinced. The medical community wants us to think this is irresponsible. Sure. Yeah, totally. The medical community wants to shut this type of experimentation down. This is where I disagree. Me and Josiah are on the same page here because we both don't care if this kills him. 
this is the perfect risk reward for me. If he succeeds, we all get a cool new thing. If he fails, then I lose a stranger named Josiah. Sold. Having tons of citizen scientists willing to perform dangerous experiments on themselves and potentially die for us is a feature, not a bug. What's the problem? Less humans? So don't you realize after your third loser kid, you don't have the DNA to make somebody special? Most of them are just gonna grow up, they're just gonna end up being another shithead in like an SUV that doesn't pull out far enough into the intersection, right? Now you gotta wait a whole nother light to make a left, and you're just sitting there losing your shit, screaming at your windshield with this dude who didn't need to exist. It's like there's no reason for that guy. We got that guy. That guy's mission is to inspire more citizen science. Josiah is quoted as saying he wants to live in a world where people get drunk and genetically modify themselves. That would be awesome. What could go wrong? There are other famous examples of biohackers making big public stunts by injecting themselves with unproven gene therapies to cure HIV, herpes, gonorrhea, the clap, HPV. Okay, yeah, there's a pattern for things people wanna cure, but they've also tried to cure aging. And you guys are gonna be so surprised when I tell you this. Nothing's really worked. Yeah, you know, people with HPV are still aging. Anyway. Putting yourself in harm's way is one thing, but here's the thing we all need to keep an eye on. Genes get passed down. There's this little thing called gene drive. Gene drive is a new and risky genetic engineering technology where the goal is to drive a single trait through a population, through a species, for all generations to come. What you're saying is I'm not just going to engineer this single organism. As a result, I'm gonna engineer an entire population and thereby an entire ecosystem. Um, that's an immense amount of power. To me, it's the most high leverage technology I've seen after maybe nuclear power. Ultimately, you could describe it as an extinction technology. So what, what are the implications of an ecosystem that has its mosquito population, or at least one species of its mosquito population, crash? Uh, we, we don't know the answer to that question. Critics say wiping out entire species of mosquitoes to eradicate malaria is playing God. And I say, yeah, but also, fuck mosquitoes. The coronavirus of insects. Let's play God. Also, if we can cause mosquitoes to go extinct, can't we just Jurassic Park those guys and bring them back? Pretty sure genetic engineering means extinction is reversible. But maybe that's the law of arrogance talking. Oh, did I just get a law? Oh, that's Emmett Short. He invented the law of arrogance. Real piece of shit. He's the reason there's no more chipmunks. Don't look, oh shit. Hey Emmett, great to see you pal. Love your law, dude. I know, I'm being pretty cavalier about all this, but to be clear, humanity's already playing God. It's kind of our thing. At this point, we're just quibbling over where we draw the line. The good news is you don't have to decide because like a tsunami, this wave is crashing whether you like it or not. In fact, gene drive changes have already been made in humans. Hu says he genetically edited human embryos, not just for research, but for implantation, leading to the world's first births of genetically altered humans, baby girls born in China from embryos designed to be resistant to HIV. That happened in 2019, and soon it'll happen again in Russia. This procedure is currently only happening in the lab, but if you don't think this stuff is gonna make its way into a garage, well, maybe you'll change your mind when you see what people are doing in garages now. There's a great YouTube channel called The Thought Emporium. This dude, Justin Atkin, and his team are doing some of the coolest things. I'll link to the whole channel so you can binge them all, but here's a quick taste of what he's up to. Justin made a meatball. That doesn't sound as impressive I'll let him explain it. This is a grape, but using a special chemical, we can actually remove all of the cells while leaving that cellulose sponge behind. We could grow some animal cells in a dish and then transfer them to that empty scaffold. You could turn a plant into meat. This channel's doing cool stuff too though, right? Like I learned how to fly my drone. Bottoms up. Well, let's hope that doesn't kill me. 
I took a home-brewed, genetically modified virus to attempt to get rid of my lactose intolerance. Now, this probably sounds pretty drastic, but it was also very effective and completely got rid of my lactose intolerance for a really long time. Homemade gene therapy cures. I had an AI write my script for me, which is just less work for me. After more than a decade of dreaming about this moment, and frankly, years of work, I've finally done it. The yeast in this tube produce real spider silk. I've become quite competent at designing DNA from scratch. He grew spider silk for his YouTube channel. I learned Adobe After Effects. Justin learned to speak life into existence. Southern Black Widows are also very easy to buy on eBay, and I was able to purchase a whole vial of nightmare fuel for a grand total of $15. <laughs> I reviewed some Tesla accessories that were pretty cheap. If you could grow the neurons outside of an organism connected directly to a computer, you could, in theory, use them directly to do a sort of computation and make decisions. This is my homemade electrode array filled with actual human neurons. I figured out how to get light to shine through that canvas so it looks like a real city. He grew human neurons? Who can compete with this guy? Look, just go check out Justin's channel, would you please? He's the kind of guy that gets a law named after him. But I gotta say, no jokes. It's like he's not even trying. And I will get a law one day. Look, if you're still watching, I'm assuming you enjoyed yourself. If you click that like button and leave a comment, it encourages the YouTube algorithm to show my video to a brand new audience and helps grow the channel. If you're not already subscribed, I hope you consider doing that and hitting the bell to get notified. To the Patreon members who have been growing steadily, I can't thank you enough. This is Thanksgiving when I'm filming this, and so just thank you. I wanna grow this show into a full-fledged production with a studio audience and correspondence, so if you wanna help with that vision, consider joining these awesome people on Patreon or as a YouTube member. Or buy some BDE coffee, it's bulging with flavor. Ryan Stout, once again, added some great jokes. Go find his stand-up on YouTube. Find me on Twitter and Instagram, or just click one of these videos to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Thanks for watching. Cheers.